So for those of you who have been following this channel long enough, you will realize that I have a lot of content centered around the Sonos soundbars, including the Sonos Arc, as well as the Beam Gen 2 here. Now the Beam Gen 2 has been without competition for a very long time. And even though Sony did throw out some competition in the form of the HTA 3000 from the A series of the soundbar, it was priced a little bit too high to be in competition with the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Now the S2000 is the top of range from the S series and when I first heard the price two months ago it was priced a little bit high and in Singapore it was selling for $1,099 which as compared to the Singapore pricing of the Sonos Beam Gen 2 at $899 it wasn't much of a competition I mean I would say that most people were still veered towards the $899 for the Sonos Beam Gen 2. But today, I realized that the list price, or rather the selling price of the Sony S2000 soundbar is now at $899, which puts it right in the sights of the Sonos Beam Gen 2. And in the US, the pricing is also right about the same 500 bucks for each of these. So with $500 or $899 Singapore dollars, which will you put your money on? Now, as usual, in my upfront summary, I will tell you that both of these will have their own ups and downs, pros and cons. So it's not a very definitive um, statement from me. I know that. But today, I will run you through the sound profile from the Sony S2000 as well as the Sonos Beam Gen 2. And from the frequency sweep, it will then be clear visually where the Sony outperforms the Sonos or where the Sonos outperforms the Sony. But really, the summary is you choose either of these, you're still going to be good. If you really want sound quality, actually, the Sony S2000 soundbar is the one to get. If you want compatibility and further down the road upgrades, then the Beam Gen 2 will be the soundbar of choice. Now, let me get into a little bit more specifics on why I say that. Now, the first thing I will do is actually I will talk about the sound, then I'll talk about the the differences and the similarities between the two soundbars later on in the video. Now I'm first going to pull up the green chart. The green frequency response sweep curve that you're seeing on the screen right now is for the Sony HTS 2000. As you can see, the bass response is actually pretty strong. You'll see a peak at about 100 hertz or so and it's sustained both to the left and the right. Uh, while the mid-range is a little bit more recessed and more subdued, you see that it picks up at the treble end again. So what you will experience is a pretty solid bass as well as a pronounced treble response from the speaker. And in use, I do actually feel that I'm not very sure whether Sony is doing that to actually accentuate the um, surround sound effects, but the surround sound that is being thrown out from the single sound by itself, I did not attach the optional rear surround speakers, nor did I attach the subwoofer because I want to compare with the Beam Gen 2 without the subwoofer as well as the surround speakers. Now, for this particular soundbar, it throws out a particularly convincing sound stage. So you're not going to hear things like directly behind you. It won't be able to achieve that, but you can get a pretty solid and a wide response. Now, you got to bear in mind that the Sony HD-S2000 is marketed as a 3.1 soundbar, meaning to say there is a 0.1, the subwoofer. Now, the subwoofer are actually flanking the speakers and these are the two drivers, as you can see from the light reflection. And there are ports on either side of the speakers, meaning to say there are actually two ported subwoofers within this soundbar chassis itself. The three referring to the left center and the right. Now, the left center and the right drivers are actually placed quite close together in the middle of the chassis, but it didn't detract from the amount of um, stereo separation, I would say, or the surround performance of the soundbar. Now, in the Beam Gen 2, I'm going to be pulling out the red curve. Now, in comparison, you'll see that the Sony is actually performed better in the bass department at about 100 hertz. It's peaking way above the Sonos, as well as in the treble department. And from about 3 kilohertz onwards, you are seeing the Sony actually outperforming and being louder in the treble department than the Sonos. Now, where then is the Sonos standing in the mid-range response about 1 kilohertz down to 400 hertz or so and right up to 3 kilohertz you'll see that the beam gen 2 is actually a little bit stronger a little bit uh coming across a little bit louder in the mid-range now if you look, compare the two curves 
side by side, you're going to see that the Sonos, which is represented by the red curve, is actually producing a slightly flatter response, which technically is what I like, but if you are just in it for the movie, for the um, enjoyment effect, you might actually prefer the slightly more exciting sound of the Sony, right? Because the HTS 2000 is actually pulling up the bass and it's actually pushing up the treble quite a bit. Now, in terms of power supply, it's actually being powered by a power brick. I have it installed, I don't pull it out, but it is not a direct AC in. It requires a power brick like those that you charge your laptop with and it powers the soundbar. The soundbar is actually very hefty, it's actually a lot wider than the Sonos Beam Gen 2, but it does throw out the convincing surround sound effect. And for the Beam Gen 2, while it is a lot more compact, it's just about two feet wide, it actually throws out a surround sound stage that is pretty impressive as well. So in terms of surround, you're not going to feel that there are any difference, but where the Sony will pull right ahead is in the bass department. Now, when you are actually using the soundbar on its own without a subwoofer, without spending any more money on subs for either of these systems, you will find that the Sony is actually producing more bass. In fact, I would dare say it might even produce more bass than the Sony HTA3000, which is a slightly higher end soundbar than the S2000. So my conclusion when it comes to sound between the Sonos Beam Gen 2 as well as the Sony HTS2000 is that if you're not going to be buying any more subwoofers or not going to be adding any surround sound speakers, I would say go for the Sony. The Sony is a probably a much better sounding speaker, much better sounding soundbar than the Sonos Beam Gen 2 on its own. But where the Sonos will truly shine is because you are able to add the Sub Mini or the Sub Gen 3 or even add a variety of surround speakers including the new era 100, era 300 as well as the older Sonos One, Sonos Play Ones, uh, Ikea Symphonics Bookshelf, Lamb, Picture Frames even. So many speakers that you can add to the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Whereas the HTS 2000 from Sony will only take the RS3 or the RS5. And the RS3 and RS5, they aren't actually able to um, be used as independent stereo speakers. So the flexibility and the ecosystem for the works, it will go to the Sonos. So the Sonos is like it is capturing you with an ecosystem. Now, if you invest in the Sonos ecosystem, you are not just getting a soundbar, you are getting a lot of other stuff when you decide to upgrade or you change out your system in the future. And these kind of products uh, right now today, they will last very long. I haven't had a Sonos product die on me in recent years, unless it's due to accident. Um, but otherwise, I would say that they should last you quite a long time. So if you've got the 500 bucks to spend on either of these or the 900 Singapore dollars that you can spend on either of these, you probably won't go wrong. But if you do not have anything more than that 900 or the 500 US dollars, then get the Sony HTS 2000. That will suffice. In terms of the base performance, it is pretty impressive. You will be watching movies um, and re-enjoying all the movies all over again with just a soundbar without requiring an additional subwoofer. In fact, I've been playing the Diablo 4, which was recently released, I think about two weeks ago, and I've been playing it on the Sony HTS 2000 soundbar. I did not attach my sub. I have a sub. I have also the surround speakers, but I did not use them, and it was actually pretty good enough. The sound came across very, very well. Now, in fact, when I did the testing, it was based on a 50% volume on both the Sonos as well as the Sony. And the Sonos came out a little bit softer. The Sony was a lot punchier and was louder in most aspects of the game. In fact, when I was gaming, I brought the sound down to about 15%. So that is how much power is being packed into S2000 soundbar. So there are a couple of differences that I have to point out when you are choosing between these two. So it's not just the sound. With the sound aside, you know that the Sony will be capable of more bass and better treble response, and the Sonos will be capable of 
a better mid-range and better dialogue. But you do want to take note of some other things. Now, the Sony HDS2000 is capable of both Dolby Atmos and the DTX, whereas the Beam Gen 2 is only capable of decoding Dolby Atmos. No DTSX support. There is DTS support unofficially, but no DTSX. So for those of you where it matters to you, note that the Sony will be able to decode DTSX especially if you are gaming on the Xbox or you are in possession of a large library of Blu-ray discs with DTSX sound. The Sony will also come with a handy remote. It is a very small, maybe a two finger size remote and this is it. Um, you can't skip track on this. You can adjust the volume, you can adjust the bass, you can do the night mode and the voice enhancement mode, turn on sound feel and mute it and change input and that's about it, power on and off which can then be linked to your TV anyway, so you don't actually need the remote. But if you do, it is actually pretty handy. And the remote has a input button right here. So if you take a look at this input button, what does it do? Well, because it switches between a HDMI port as well as a optical input port. So the Sony has both ports directly built into the soundbar. So you can actually accept both HDMI EARC input as well as optical. Optical being the lesser and you will only get 5.1 channel sound. But if that's what your TV will support, then the Sony will be able to support it directly. Not only that, you can connect two together. So you can actually pair up two devices to the Sony. Whereas on the Beam Gen 2, there is no physical optical port, but they do come with a dongle where you can plug it into the HDMI ER port that will convert an optical signal into the Beam Gen 2. But that means that you only have one signal coming in at any one time. Now, not only that, the HDS 2000 also has Bluetooth support. Well, granted, there's a trade-off here because this Beam Gen 2 supports AirPlay and this doesn't, but there is Bluetooth audio support. So you can actually switch in audio from a Bluetooth device if you want to stream any music from your mobile devices to the Sony. So that's a pretty nice touch. I think with the ERA 100 and the 300, Sonos is slowly moving towards a Bluetooth enabled speaker. So maybe in the next release of the Beam Gen 3, you will get Bluetooth support. So with that, I will summarize that the Sony HTS2000 soundbar is actually a very good alternative to the Sony's Beam Gen 2 and in terms of sonic performance there are ways that it actually is outperforming the Beam Gen 2. So for those of you with just that $899 to spend or $500 US and don't want to buy any other speakers then I would recommend that you go for the Sony HDS2000 soundbar. Now the HDS2000 soundbar actually has improved the game quite significantly so Sonos will have some catching up to do in the next release of the Beam Gen 3. When is it going to come i don't know but if there's a refresh that's coming to the sonos line of soundbars then i guess it will be coming to the Sonos arc sooner than the beam gen 2 the beam gen 2 was launched much later than the sonos arc the sonos arc first version was launched in june of 2020 so now it's june of oh july of 2023 so maybe within between now and one year later well in the meantime you have the much more powerful and better sounding Sony HD-S2000 to tide you over. So if you have any questions on the soundbar or any differences that you want to ask about these two speakers, leave them down in the comment section down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you in one of this video and for those of you who are interested in a deep dive of the HD-S2000 soundbar, I have done a review before. You can check it out right here and I'll see you in over that video.